He got her. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, one of them little... <laughs> it doesn't matter, you know. It's yeah. a fish, man. Just sitting here waiting to go for oh, That's a pretty good brook trout. Just not big a one. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. Brook trout. Take him out, dude. That is bull. That's got your bull. bull in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Now, hey, it don't is, get no better than this. Hey, it does not get any better than this. <laughs> Go ahead. Holler when you see them coming. I'm going to say, that's brook trout. Huh? They get up five or six pounds up here. You bet. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, You don't awesome. want to give this up. Yeah, I'm telling you, he hit it good, too. What I did, I threw it out and just let it flutter down, and he ate it. Get one of them five-pounders before we start hunting. Before we start hunting? Yeah, go ahead. I can, I can do it, buddy. <laughs> I guarantee you I can right do here. it. I ain't gonna tell you where the big ones are yet, because we'll never go hunting. All I did is do it right there like that. Yeah, let it, it's real deep there. There he is. That's the one we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that is That's a better a good fish. One, yeah. Another brookie? Yeah. That's a sweet boy. <laughs> right here. I quit. I quit. <laughs> well, that's a good one. That's getting up there. Look at that big one, the Look wall that. hanger. That's a good one. Yeah. Get a little bigger. I suppose you want me to take this one on. Well, look at me. I'm sitting here ready to go hunting, and I can't do anything about it. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, two casts, two fish, yeah. caribou waiting on the hill. I can't stand it. A lot of hills can move on some some animals once you see them and get the wind right. But there's a lot of people that are more novice with a bow, and I know Dick that you always go out and you let them practice, get comfortable, work with them a little bit before they go in and make that shot. But wouldn't you think it'd be much easier for us to move down in some of this timber right here and get on some of those big trails for these more novice hunters? Yeah, for the novice hunters, it's the only way to go. You find a good used trail and get set up off at about 10 or 15 yards and and just sit back and wait. When the caribou are traveling, they'll give, they'll present a shot that, that anyone can take. And you know, by doing that, then, then you've got a much cleaner shot, and you're more concealed. And again, you know they're coming somewhat like a, a mule deer, white tail, or even an elk will use a trail, too. These caribou are probably more, um, I guess, easier to pattern than the other animals would be, don't you think? Yeah, they are, especially because they use those trails. And, and a heavily used trail will give them away every time. The caribou are not predictable in the sense that they'll travel on the same trail every day, but they've been using the same migration route for thousands of years, and they're using the same trails. It just seems that when a one caribou gets traveling on the trail, the others just seem to follow the scent that the first caribou leaves on that trail. So you can kind of pinpoint a main trail and sit on it with a bow and usually be successful. So you look for a funnel area like we're looking at right here. You got water, you got a little light, and then you got water again, and it goes down, and then there's a crossing area back then that we saw earlier today. That's a prime example right there of sitting down and finding those spots. When you're a novice and kind of on your own caribou hunting, that's what you want to look for is where it funnels down and gives you your shot. The reason that this is such a bull hunter's paradise is that you have two tags, and you have the opportunity to harvest two animals, along with the sheer numbers that are passing you when you're in the middle of the migration. and the just a magnificent country that you can hunt in. There's not many places in the world anymore that you can go up and kind of be as remote as we are and yet have the opportunity to hunt just like some, say we did 100 years ago. There's three different herds in this area. There's the George River herd, the Leaf River herd, and the Bienville Lake herd. The Bienville Lake herd's a little bit more sedentary. They kind of will hang around an area a little bit longer. But as the caribou stage up, then you start seeing them bump in a little bit, and the next herd will go west, and the next herd will be west, and it uh, just kind of gets things moving. And we're right on the leading edge of the migration right now, so we're having to hunt up high for these herds. Can you get a topo map of an area like this so that you can really look at it? And, and you know, caribou has got to be like any other animal. Uh, you know, we always say that everything starts off, everything sleeps, everything eats, and everything drinks. 
You know, so if you can, can kind of get that hub of that wheel and see migratory routes and look at a good map, don't you think it would help you when you came to an area like this if you've never been here before? Yeah, definitely. It'd help a bunch because it just narrowed down. You imagine if you just got off the plane and somebody said, hey, go caribou hunt right here. How would you know unless you knew those tendencies? You know what I'd say? What? A. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> That's no, you say A, you betcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. Quite an experience. It is, isn't it? Just sitting here is nice. You know, when you look out across the country like this, and particularly when you're flying in and you never see a road, you never hear a jet fly over, and you never see anybody else other than the group you're with. This land is so vast that it's not measured by acres, it's measured by square miles. We're 215 miles from the nearest town, 900 miles from the nearest metropolitan area. The particular area that we're in right now has never seen a man other than the Inuits that grew up in this part of the country. So I feel like I'm somewhat of a, I guess, an explorer. And, you know, it's, it's unreal that the feeling you can get that, that kind of runs over you from being able to see all the animals and all the wildlife and all the unexplored country, being able to cast a rod and reel out to a brook trout that's never seen a plug. Only you can experience something like this. One of the greatest feelings I've ever had in all my life. Ultimate Outdoors is brought to you by Pennzoil Outdoors, Milliken Innovation for the Serious Outdoorsman, Mossy Oak, It's Not a Passion, It's an Obsession, and by L.L. Bean. Start here, go anywhere. Begin your journey with a free catalog by calling 1-800-814-4288. I'm going to take a quick look up here, see if they're in here. They can pass about 100 yards to the right. We've got to get over and get going. What about this wind right here, Dave? We got her in our face. We're OK. OK, so if we slide down in this bottom. Yeah, we think we might get those three trees right there. Yeah, we'll get we'll set up right there. Let's try. Too far. Okay. Yeah. Look, look again. Look again here, see if you can see. Let me get on this rock. Easy.
Boy, that's a dandy, Wayne. Well, that's my first. You know? Congratulations. Real good. Yeah. Nice shot. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if he was that big or not. That's the first one ever. And uh, I'm just as proud. But even though he is, uh, he was a trophy to me, but he is a real trophy. He's a real trophy. He's a book one. Yeah. He's talking about the shovels here Looks and like, the points up here. Yeah, lots of points on top. Pretty good best times, but a great double shovel. Look, they're just matching set right up there in front. And that really helps him here, huh? Yeah, it sure does. Everything's equal. That's what you look for, because the deductions will yeah. take away. And you know the biggest part? Getting him out of here. <laughs> hey, we can do it, though, buddy. <laughs> we can do it. Don't, 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 don't. Got the bull coming to it. He's real. He's real. He's coming. Tis the season to party with Multimax. Because this month, we've got the hippest movies. Yo. Yo, yo, yo to you. On Cinemax, catch a different film every night at 8. A big premiere on Fridays. And see Sigourney Battle Murderers. And Aliens. And on More Max, we've got intense vanguards, classic faces, and tons of your favorite tough guy. Turn to Max, More Max, and Max West. Pump it up with Multimax on DirecTV. You're elected. Dear Lord, make sure to put me in office where I belong. To meet Tracy Flick. Some people say I'm an overachiever, but I think they're just jealous. She's a real go-getter, all right. Who put you up to this? Oh, hi, Tracy. Who put you up to this? Good luck there, Tracy. And find out why politics, who knew how high she would climb, I had to stop her, is just a popularity contest. You're on, Mr. Popular. Election. Playing this month on Direct Ticket, only on Direct TV. It's coming right off this hill right here, right now, Tony. Tell you what, we got to keep that one in our face. He's, we've heard one bugle right up here. We got another one back in here, and I wouldn't be surprised they're not all the way around us. So, you know, this wind is just we got to keep it so that uh, in our favor. You know, seems like it's been swirling. I notice you check the wind a lot. Well, you know, you go through a period of time late in the afternoon right here where this wind gonna be coming off these downdrafts right here on these hills, and it's actually gonna be swirling in every direction. And what I try to do is keep it in my face rather than going to them. If I have to go up a hill, or I have to come down, or I have to skirt it, I've gotta do whatever I gotta do to keep that wind in my face. Cause the elk are on top right now, and what they're gonna do is that current, when they hit it, they're gonna come around, so this current's coming up in their noses. They keep it in their face, too. Yes, they do. And it's so important for you and I to use it to our advantage and not to theirs. And that's why so many people, you know, are not successful, you know, when they're hunting out here. Of course, just seeing an animal to me success, but, you know, I wanna, I wanna take one too. So we're gonna, we're gonna use this thing right here. See, it's coming down right here now. It's coming down, it's going back up here. So what we gotta do is we gotta get it in our faces here, coming down this way, instead of going back up our downdraft. We're gonna need to cut it right over here and go to the top. Let's change this way. Now, when we get up here, Tony, this wind's gonna change. It's gonna come back down. See what it's done now? It's going right down this draft. And we gotta get we gotta get up here to get it to where we need to. That one's still bugling over here. This one's still bugling back here. We've heard a lot of bugling. They seem to be all around us. How do you know when, when the column or whatever hit the bugle? You know, Tony, it's kind of a feeling that I have hunting them so much. But the one thing, until I get this wind right and I get set up and I feel good about the situation, and that comes with a lot of hunting experience, I don't want to call until I'm ready for them to know where I am. I don't want them to be looking for me moving through these woods. So I want to do my slipping and when I get set up and I feel comfortable that I've got to, you know, get you a shot and I can bring them into where I need to with you, then that's when I'll call. But I won't call until I'm set up and ready to go. I always like for the wildlife to communicate and let me hear them naturally. 
Now, like right now, you know, we hear a lot of bugling, we hear a lot of birds, everything's real active. You come in the woods, you don't hear birds, you usually don't hear bugling. So, you know, as long as they'll bugle, we'll set up, and then we'll call, and we'll bring them to us, and we'll be ready for them. And so he's on up. Stop and go driving. Like what I've done with the place? Hey, what does this do? Well, that opens up the roof so I can airlift anything in or out of the garage. Stop! Go! Pennzoil. Millican and Company, producers of quality fabrics for the serious outdoorsman. Millican Hunter Orange Northweave fabrics exceed hunter safety regulations. Northweave fabrics by Millican provide superior warmth and performance. Products like the Northweave hunting vest and shirt are perfect for use in the field. Millican products for the serious outdoorsman. Available from L.L. Bean. For a free catalog, call 1-800-814-4288. That's 1-800-814-4288. Log on to dsports.com and take twenty dollars off your purchase of fifty dollars or more. dsports.com. Seize the D. What do you do while your battery is charging? Well, now you could just keep working. Because Skill just created the dual source power system, the first cordless tools with a corded backup. So you can finish what you start, which is a much more satisfying use of time. Dual source. Only from Skill. Rick, this is Zen Master Koyo returning your call. I cannot ask the Buddha to help you choose a point guard for your ESPN fantasy basketball team. Let go of fantasy, the Rick. Empty your mind. Ultimate Outdoors is brought to you by Pennzoil Outdoors. Millican, innovation for the serious outdoorsman. Mossy Oak, it's not a passion, it's an obsession. And by L.L. Bean, start here, go anywhere. Begin your journey with a free catalog by calling 1-800-814-4288. Oh. 
Wayne, he's too small. I don't want him. Okay. There's a little bugling right here behind us. I'm gonna switch around. I'm gonna ease around the tree. That open and shoot him. You take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Good shot. Good shot. <laughs> Put it there, buddy. That's a nice bull. Nice bull. That's better than that other one. Oh, man, a lot better. It's a five by five or a six by six. I can't. What, what happened? We had one over here. We had one here. All of a sudden. And then this one come in behind us. Yes, it, it pays to be patient. <laughs> You know, we started to go after this bull over here. I'm glad we stayed. I'm glad. Man, that's a nice bull. He went right down to us. A good shot. Let's go up here and check him. He's almost a six by. He's down. He's down. Ooh. He is, isn't he? Two, three, four, five. That's a nice bull. Thank yes. you. Started to be six over here. He is almost six. Hey, you made a good yeah. shot. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of Go Network. Go.com. All right, Wayne Pearson getting after the big game in a big way. That's Ultimate Outdoors for today. You're watching ESPN2 Outdoors right here in just a few minutes. North American Walleye Anglers Association, one of their big... But, uh, you can see we've got several cows and a bull. And what they've done at night, they come down in the grays. And in the morning, the wind is coming down off the ridges. They use that wind in their favor. And they go up, and they'll actually bed on top. I've been watching these elk. This is the third day. They do an exact same thing that they always do. And uh, and that's go right up this little draw right here through the oak brush, through this meadow, and right up on top. Now then, I've been watching them. I know exactly the pattern, exactly what they're going to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up there and set up in the morning, get everything exactly right in my favor and the wind, and uh, and we'll try to take one of these bulls. Looks like a pretty nice bull. He's real wide. Don't know how heavy he is. It's hard to tell from this far. but. When you're scouting, try to get you a high point. That way you don't disturb any of the animals. And this way, you can kind of figure out their migration, their route. You know exactly where they're going, and then you can use that in your favor. That's what we're going to do. You know, the one thing I want to encourage people before they come out here in this altitude, you really not only need to be in physical condition, I recommend you come out here one, two, three days early before you start hiking these mountains. You know, you can go to the gym, you can climb stairs, you can do all the above. This air's thin. We're sitting at eight, eight thousand five hundred feet, and you sure need to be in physical condition. You also need to be climatized. Now, what I've done, I've patterned these elk right here. Three days I've watched them. I've done my homework. Not sure if this is a muy grande or not. May be for me, may not be for the record book. But again, a muy grande is very big. We know he's a, an exceptional animal. I know that at night he goes down and he feeds in this meadow, and then it takes him about an hour to work his way back up. And we're sitting right now, it's about 7 15 maybe. He's been crossing this ridge right here at about 8 o'clock, 8 15. You can put your clock on him. He's right there every day, same time. He's got about 10 or 12 cows with him. They'll come in first, and he'll cross next. I'm going to go right up here and fix me up a little blind and some oak brush, try to allow myself at a 200-yard shot, 150, somewhere along in there. Depends on where he crosses. I know my gun. I know my capability. I know what it's going to do, and all I have to do is do it. So I'm going to ease on up and see if I, the wind's perfect. The wind's perfect. And I'll show you what I'm looking at here in just a second. They feed, work their way through the oak brush, come to the top of the hill, and they bed, 
Afternoons, they go back down. Ultimate Outdoors is brought to you by Pennzoil Outdoors, Milliken, innovation for the serious outdoorsman, Mossy Oak, it's not a passion, it's an obsession, and by L.L. Bean, start here, go anywhere. Begin your journey with a free catalog by calling 1-800-814-4288. Boy, it's a pretty place right here. <sighs> Everything set up just right. Take my little seat, put it down. Get it set up, sit down. There are a couple little limbs right here. Well, I can see. Got a perfect rest right here. Now, the pattern these elk have been on is they're in this meadow. They're down here and they graze all night. And they start up. They use their nose in number one sense. And they come up here on this hill. They're going to bed, but they're going to go back into thick oak brush. I found a saddle and an opening here where I can get a shot. Remember, this elk is seven, eight years old. He's a movie grinder to me. May not be in the record book. He's a five or five or six by six. We know he's down there. We heard him bugle, and he's coming. He's going to be behind his cows. He's going to follow his cows up. And again, that wind is coming down. In the afternoons, if he's bedded, he starts back down to the meadow. The wind's coming up. So he always keeps that wind in his favor, right in his nose. That's the key, is the wind. Just hurt him again. Got to shell my gun. Now, the rut is over. And this elk is bugling every now and then just to tell his cows that he's with them. He's already pushed the other big bulls out of the way. He's got the herd by himself. He's right by himself. What we're going to do is we know the cows are moving first. We'll wait on the bull. He gets in that opening, and it's pretty narrow, unless he comes on top. If he comes in a narrow place, I may have to hit a cow call and stop him. But if I do, we'll do that, and then we'll make the shot. Make sure that you know your equipment. There goes a cow right there. Okay, and it's got a little yearling behind it. Now, they're staggering. They're not going to come in all together. They stagger. You got a lead cow, and sometimes these cows are a lot even older than these bulls. And you got to watch yourself. They'll give you away before this bull will. The bull's following the cows, and these cows are up there, and they're very alert coming across this opening. They're using their nose and their eyes, and when they go up there and bed, they're going to bed on the side of the hill where they can see the winds coming over the top where they can smell. That way they're well protected. They know what they're doing. They're pretty sharp. All right, there's some more cows. Those cows are nervous. They're sensing something right now. They're looking around. They're using their nose. They're using their eyes, and they're trying to locate something. Again, some of these cows could be older than this bull, and they're very smart, very smart. One just look back, that means something else is coming, and they know it. Chances are he's gonna come too. Chances are. I see some horns. I think go through the old brush. I see them. Let me get my gun ready. Again, get you a good rest. He's moving out the opening. Let me get my gun call. Hey, that's what I came for. Looks like a perfect shot right behind the shoulder. I'm going to bolt another shell just in case. He ran over there. All right, looks like he went down. Looks like he went down. And then we're going to give him an hour, at least one hour. I'm just going to sit here and relax. I've got another shell on my gun. I'll ease up here in a minute, and I'll check him. But it looked like it was a textbook shot. All the practice that I've done and all the work that we put in paid off. And again, if we didn't shoot the animal, it'd still be a great hunt. But the bonus is the shot we just took. 
This way he ran right in here. This trail, they always stay on a trail if they hurt pretty bad. He run right on around this edge. I don't know how far he went. Didn't look like he went that far. Uh, when he went down, I did see some brush roll over. We've given him over an hour now, so he should be down. We just keep looking. It's just a speck of blood every now and then. He's staying right on this trail right here. He's on a side hill. Remember these elk, when they hit pretty hard, they'll either go down or go on a side hill. He's following his cows. Should be in this brush right ahead of me. If they hit real hard, they won't go up. Not many times. Of course, they're unpredictable. Here's blood, and here's my bull right here. Have your gun ready, just in case. Go in and check. Remember, this is a real big animal. He's down, he's my bull. This is the bull I've been looking for. I patterned this bull. Look at the width on him. Again, this is my movie, Grundy. He's not in that 390 class by no means, but he's gonna be bumping 300, a really nice bull. Real heavy, real massive, real wide, good length, all of the above. I'll take care of him now and pack him out. Take him one time. I'm gonna give him one trick. Okay, get ready, Wayne. Take him, Wayne, straight up. Got right, three on that one. They're all young birds. All young all birds. Young They're going to come back, too. They're going to come back. Oh, boy. Get ready. Everybody get ready. Get ready. All right. Take him, Wayne. Wow. Look at that. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Good shot. <laughs> Wayne, that was... Here's a bunch back, Wayne. Get bunch reloaded. Back. Nice shooting, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. Nice shooting. Appreciate it right there. Yep. Oh, yes. 